Hey everyone and welcome to your deep dive. Looks like you're ready to explore the world of self-love affirmations with us. Absolutely. We're diving deep into this, the one with all those powerful affirmations. Yeah, those are great. They're designed to boost self-love and like really amp up your self-esteem and confidence. It's amazing how they can shift your whole perspective, you know? And that's what I'm super curious about. Like, how do these affirmations actually work their magic? What makes them so effective? Well, Lavender really emphasizes repetition as a key ingredient, you know, kind of like rewiring those thought patterns. Oh, okay. I see where you're going with this. It's like establishing a new mental habit. Okay. So instead of reaching for that extra cookie, we're reaching for an affirmation, but I'm curious how that actually plays out in our brains. It all comes down to this fascinating concept called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. Yeah. yeah. It's essentially your brain's incredible ability to change and adapt throughout your life. So it's like our brains are always evolving. Exactly. And every time you repeat those positive statements, especially those focused on self-love and acceptance, you're basically rewiring those neural pathways. It's like we're intentionally creating new pathways. Think of it like this. Those pathways are like information highways in your brain and you get to decide which ones get paved and prioritized. Oh, I like that. So it's like choosing to pave a smooth, positive road instead of that old bumpy road of self-doubt. Precisely. Each time you affirm I am worthy, you're strengthening those specific neural connections associated with self-worth. And the more we use those roads, the stronger those connections become. Exactly. Over time, those positive thoughts become more dominant, kind of like a well-traveled highway. And that can gradually shift your entire self-perception. That's incredible. It's like we have so much more power than we realize to shape our own self-image. Absolutely. And speaking of shaping, Lavendaire highlights some pretty powerful themes in her affirmations, right? Like self-acceptance, embracing those imperfections, recognizing your inherent worth. Right, it's like she's created a roadmap for building a healthier relationship with yourself. Okay, let's unpack these themes a bit because I'm really drawn to this idea of self-acceptance. Embracing those quirks and imperfections that make us, well, us. Yeah, that's such an important one. Because let's face it, we live in a world obsessed with perfection and it can be so exhausting trying to keep up, you know? Oh, absolutely. And you know, striving for that unattainable ideal can really take a toll. What if instead of hiding those imperfections or feeling ashamed of them, we just leaned into them? Lean in. I love that. Tell me more. Well, those so-called imperfections, they often hold the key to our most authentic selves. They're what make us relatable and interesting. They make us real. That's so true. It's like those quirks and flaws are part of what makes us unique. Exactly. And when we can view those quirks with a sense of acceptance, maybe even find the humor in them, it takes away their power to diminish our self-worth. It's like saying, hey, this is part of what makes me, me, and I'm okay with that. It's like giving yourself permission to just be you. Exactly, embracing all of it. It's so freeing, right. And I remember Lavender shared this one affirmation that really hit home for me. She said, I am beautifully unique and incomparable to others. Oh, that's a good one. It's amazing how just hearing those words can give you this little boost of confidence. It's powerful. And you know that specific affirmation, it really speaks to another important theme Lavender emphasizes, inherent worth. Inherent worth, right. It's like that deep down knowing that we're worthy just because we exist, not because of what we achieve or how we look or what other people think. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. And that's something I've definitely struggled with in the past, you know, mm. that feeling of needing external validation to feel worthy. Oh, for sure. It's like we're conditioned to seek approval from others instead of looking within. Exactly. But these affirmations, they gently guide us back to that truth that real self-worth, lasting self-worth, it comes from within. It's about recognizing that we are enough just as we are. Yes, imperfections and all. And that's where real transformation can begin. Okay, I'm feeling empowered just hearing you say that, but it's not always easy to remember that in the day-to-day, -day, is it? Yeah, life can definitely throw curveballs and that self-doubt can creep back in. That's why Lavender talks about self-love as a source of strength. You know, it's interesting because sometimes we think of self-love as this indulgent thing, almost a little selfish, but Lavender kind of flips that on its head. Totally. She reframes self-love as an act of strength, like it's essential for showing up fully in all areas of our lives. Because when we prioritize our own well-being, we have more to give to others. Like exactly. More energy, more resilience to handle challenges, go after our goals, you know, and, and really nurture those important relationships. 
It reminds me of that classic oxygen mask analogy. You have to put your own mask on first before helping others. Yes, exactly. If we're running on empty, we can't possibly offer our best to anyone, including ourselves. So true. And that actually leads us to another key theme Levadair brings up. Huh. Setting boundaries. Boundaries, yes. It's about recognizing that saying no to protect our energy, it's not selfish. It's actually an act of self-respect. It's self-preservation. Exactly. And I think so many of us struggle with that, myself included. You know, it's easy to fall into those people-pleasing patterns or overcommitting, even when it leaves us feeling drained. It's a common struggle for sure. But when we start to view boundaries as a form of self-love, it can really change the whole dynamic. It's about saying yes to ourselves. Yes honoring our needs and our limits and recognizing that sometimes saying yes to ourselves means saying no to others. I'm thinking about that powerful affirmation from the video. I respect my energy and protect it with love. Just saying those words out loud can create this sense of empowerment. Absolutely. And it speaks to the heart of what it means to practice self-love. It's about making choices that really align with our values, our well-being. Even if it means sometimes, you know, maybe disappointing others or going against those societal expectations. Yeah, living authentically. So it's about creating a life that feels fulfilling, you know, for ourselves first and foremost. You got it. And when we honor our own needs, we actually show up more authentically in all our relationships, you know, and in all areas of life. It's like it all flows from that place of self-love. Exactly. Now, Lavender talks a lot about the power of repetition. She even suggests listening to these affirmations daily, ideally for 21 days. 21 days, yeah. And it got me thinking, you know, why 21 days? What's the science behind that magic number? Well, it goes back to that fascinating concept of neuroplasticity. Remember how we were talking about those neural pathways, those information highways in our brains? Yeah, those roads we're paving. Yes. Yeah. Well, consistency is key for those new pathways to really stick. So it's like anything else we want to learn or improve it takes practice. Exactly. The more we practice those positive affirmations, the stronger those connections become and the more ingrained they become in our subconscious mind. It's like we're rewiring our brains for self-love, one affirmation at a time. Love that. And there are so many ways to work these affirmations into your day. Oh, for sure. Like listening in the morning or maybe even just before bed. Yeah. Or even during your commute or while you're getting ready. Ooh, that's a good idea. You know, find those pockets of time where it feels good or even write them down like on sticky notes and put them around your house. Yes. Visual reminders. I love that. Exactly. The key is to just make it a consistent part of your routine. The more you expose yourself to these affirmations, the more they'll become a part of you. And that's where the real magic happens. It's like those deep-seated beliefs about ourselves. They start to transform. Yes. It's amazing how it works. So powerful. Out of everything we've talked about, what stands out to you most about Lavender's approach? You know, I think what's really effective is how she combines those core themes of self-acceptance, worthiness, inner strength with those specific actionable affirmations. It's one thing to say, I love myself, but it takes on a whole new meaning when you break it down into tangible actions. Right, like setting those boundaries or you know, even just taking some time for yourself. Yes, it's about putting it into practice. It's about walking the walk, right. Not just talking the talk. Absolutely, it's about integrating those affirmations into our lives, letting them guide our choices. And you know, another thing that strikes me about Lavender's approach is, it's like she's offering this antidote, this gentle antidote, to that constant pressure to be perfect. You know what I mean? Oh, 100%. We live in a world that glorifies self-criticism and this, this unattainable image of perfection. It's exhausting. It really is. But what Lavender does so beautifully is she encourages us to embrace this this kinder, more compassionate voice, you know, our inner voice. Yes, be kind to yourself. It's like giving ourselves permission to be human, flaws and all. Exactly. Which is incredibly freeing when you really think about it. It really is. It all comes back to that inherent worth. You know, remembering that our worth isn't tied to being perfect. It's about treating ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would offer, you know, to a friend or a loved one. That's a good way to put it, because we could be so hard on ourselves. The worst. Holding ourselves to these impossible standards. Coldly. But imagine if we could just silence that inner critic and replace it with that voice of support and encouragement. That's what it's all about. That's the power of self-love, right? Yes. Okay, we've covered so much ground in this deep dive. So much good stuff. From the, the science behind how affirmations work to those key themes 
Lavender emphasizes. It's all connected. And of course, that magic ingredient repetition. For someone listening, you know, ready to put all this into practice, what would you say is the most important takeaway? You know, I think the biggest takeaway here is that positive affirmations, when you practice them regularly and really mindfully, they can be such a powerful tools for, for cultivating self-love and just boosting your confidence. It's an inside-out transformation. Exactly. And what I really appreciate about Lavender's approach is that she makes it feel, I don't know, accessible. Totally achievable. Yeah, she breaks down these concepts into bite-sized pieces, and she offers these practical tools that anyone can use. You can do it. Exactly. And that leads me to a question for you, dear listener. Hmm, I wonder. What area of your life, you know, could use a little extra self-love? Yeah, where can you sprinkle in a little bit of that? How can you use these affirmations to make a real change? Something to think about. Definitely. I know I'm going to be pondering that myself. <laughs> this deep dive has been so insightful. It has. And remember, you are worthy, you are capable, and you are so loved. Until next time, keep diving deep.